solving exponential and logarithmic equations algebraically. Our objective here, we want to use algebra and inverse functions to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. And let's remind ourselves how the logarithmic and exponential functions are related. They are inverse functions. One undoes the other. The exponential function y equals b to the x is equivalent to the log function x equals the log base b of y. And I like to talk about kind of with the log function kind of making a little circle. Base to the x, there's the log outputs an exponent is equal to y. I like to do that little loop, kind of keep myself straight here. Okay, so the base is still the base. The log gives you an exponent, and there's the exponent, and the y becomes the argument. So, when we go to solve exponential equations, we're solving for the exponent. So here's an exponential, we're gonna be solving for x. When we go to solve logarithmic equations, we're solving for the argument. And so we'll be solving for the argument right there. Okay, what are the steps for this? Well, as necessary, we need to use inverse operations to isolate the exponent piece or the logarithmic piece. That may not always be necessary, but it generally is. And then we're gonna rewrite using the inverse function. If it's an exponential equation, we're gonna rewrite the exponent portion using its inverse or logarithmic form. If it's a logarithmic equation, we're gonna rewrite, here's a logarithmic equation, we're gonna rewrite it in its inverse exponential form in order to solve this. And then finally, we're gonna solve using inverse operations. Got a few examples, so let's take a look at how this works. I think I've got myself set here. Okay, solve six times four raised to the three X minus two is equal to 120. So we want, here's our unknown. We want to isolate this exponential piece right there. In order, and then we're gonna rewrite it using its logarithmic form. So I'm gonna write the equation six times four to the 3x minus 2 equals 120. To isolate this part, I'll, I need to move the 6 over. The 6 is attached by multiplication. So I'll undo with division. So this line here is we, are, we want to isolate the exponent piece. In this case, it just took one step. Make sure my pencil's got good lead here. On the left, I have four to the three X minus two, and on the right, 120 divided by six is 20. So now I have the exponential piece isolated. Let's rewrite it using its inverse operation, the log operation. This is the base, this is the exponent, so this becomes the argument, so log, this is the base, that'll be the new base, the base of the log of 20 equals 3x minus two. So we rewrite it, we re, excuse me, we rewrote it as log. Rewrite as log. Whoops, not the word long, the word log. Now let's, I like to check my work. Did I go from here to here correctly? Well, base to exponent, there's my little loop, four raised to the three X minus two equals 20, and that's what I had here. So I feel good about this. And so now I can get at my X using inverse operations. So let's add two to both sides. And the left side is now the log base four of 20 plus two, and the right side is three times X. And now let's divide both sides by three. And X is equal to this big uh, operation, I guess, the log base four of 20 
plus two, all of that divided by three. And then we, that's simply a calculation. Put that into your calculator and the answer is approximately, and I think I took it out to three decimal places, 1.387. And of course you can check this answer by plugging it back into here and to see if you get 120. Don't forget this got rounded, so you're not gonna get exactly 120. Or you could check this answer by graphing y equals the left side, y equals the right side, and finding the intersection. Either way works just fine. Okay, let's do some more examples. Nice to see a few practice ones. How about one in which we start off with a log and have to solve it using the exponential? And so here's example number two. Solve six plus three times the natural log of x is equal to 12. And again, here's our goal. We want to get at our, we want to get, that's our goal. We want to get at the x, which is the argument. So we want to isolate the, nat the log portion. In this case, it's a natural log portion. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the whole thing. So I have it in my handwriting to make it a little bit clearer for me, a little bit more space. I need to get the six out of the way. And I have three times the natural log of x is equal to six. And I need to get the three out of the way, three times the natural log. I have to divide by three, and I have the natural log of x is equal to two. Okay, so I first use inverse operations to isolate the log portion. Now I'm gonna rewrite it as its exponent. Let's remember, that the natural log is telling us there's an e as its base. And I like to draw my little loop. So the natural log, in this case, the, log, the natural log written in its exponential form is e squared equals x. And we're done. So we rewrote this, rewrite at, in its in its inverse form, in this case, the inverse is the exponential form. So rewrite as exponent. And x, it, e squared is approximately, it's an irrational number, but I took it out to three decimal places and I believe I got 7.389. Again, we can check. We can put this into here and run that into a calculator and we should get approximately 12 because we did round this or we can do a y equals the left side, y equals the right side, 12, and the point of intersection should be approximately 7.389. Okay, let's do some, uh, some application problems. And the idea, the exact same thing, uh, we're just kind of putting words around them now. So we have $10,000, we've invested it for T years at 10% compounded annually. The future value is given by, the future value is equal to 10,000 times 1.10 to the t. And we saw this equation in an earlier lesson. Uh, now we're gonna solve for t, okay? How, in how many years, the years is t, the number of years, will the investment grow to 45,000? So our equation becomes 45,000 is equal to 10,000 times 1.10 to the t, to time. So we, we wanna isolate this part before we can rewrite it in its inverse form, in its log form. Okay, so let's first divide both sides by 10,000. On the left side, I now have 4.5, and the right side, I have 1.10 to the t. There you go, the exponential portion is isolated. And now I can rewrite this in its logarithmic form. Okay, um, 1.10 is the base. So I have the log base 1.10. Uh, and uh, this is the argument of 4.5 equals the exponent. The log outputs an exponent. Let's check my work. I like to do my little loop. 
So before I move before I move further, let's see if I went from here to here correctly by back checking. Is is this equal to 1.10 raised to the t is equal to 4.5, and that's what you see here. And we have t. It's already done. There's no more. T is already isolated. We're already done. So let's just put it into a calculator. And T is approximately 15.8. And our time is in years. So 15.8 years. There you go. Now here's an example again. We had an exponent and we had to rewrite it in its log form because that's the inverse form in order to solve the exponent form. All right, let us continue. Let me get, I uh, got a few more examples here for you that have lots of words around them. Don't let that get you frustrated. It just means it has words around them. It's their application problems. So, according to one model, the number N of Americans in millions, age 65 and older, that will have Alzheimer's disease. My mom had Alzheimer's disease. T years after 2015 is given by this exponential function. N is equal to 5.1 times 1.03 to the T. In what year will, will this number reach uh, 8 million? Okay, well, uh, the number of Americans is 8 million, so 8 goes here. So 8 is equal to... 5.1 times 1.03 to the t. Okay, well, this, the idea is always the same. Isolate, in this case, the exponential portion. So I need to divide both sides by 5.1. Now, I'm gonna, round, I'm gonna round this answer. If you're rounding before you're finished, you ought to go out to at least four decimal places. So 8 divided by 5.1, I'm going to go out to four decimal places, 5, 6, 8, 6. And then I'm left on the right side, 1.03 to the T. Okay, my exponential portion is isolated. Let's rewrite it using the log so I can get at the exponent. This is the base. So the log base 1.03 of the argument, which is 1.5686, and log equals the exponent, and the exponent is t. Let's back check. Did I get that correct? Did I go from here to here correctly, writing it correctly? Well, I'll just start with the base. Base to exponent equals argument, and yep, 1.03 to the t equals 1.5686. I can put this into a calculator, and t is equal to 5.23 years. And of course, this is years after 2015. So it's years after 2015. So I started at 2015. I'm going to add 16 because I want to get to the year it reached. It was beyond 2015. Excuse me, it's beyond 15 years later. So I'll add 16, and it looks like the year will be 2031 when the number of P Americans age 65 and older um, reaches, that, that have Alzheimer's, reaches 8 million. All right, two more examples. Let's do a more complicated financial example. This has a more complicated financial formula, but we're going to see that it's, it's not going to make things a whole lot more difficult. We used a simpler one early on. So the compound interest formula, A, is equal to P times the sum 1, o, 1 plus R over N, all raised to the N times T. This describes the accumulated value, which is A, the ending value, of a sum of money P, which is called the principal, after T years have passed, at an annual percentage rate of R, and it's in decimal form, compounded N times per year, and N appears here and here. How long will it take for $50,000 to grow to a million dollars? If you have an annual rate of 9% and we're compounding monthly, 
monthly tells us, of course, compounding monthly means 12 times per year. That's what monthly means. Okay, so we want $50,000 to grow to a million. So a million dollars, that's the ending amount we want. That is the accumulated value we're looking for. That's A. And we started with $50,000. That's the principal, the starting money, the starting amount. One plus, the rate is 9%. As a decimal, that's 0 0.09. N is the number of times compounded each year. If it's compounded monthly, that's 12. So we put 12 here, and we put 12 here, and we want to find T, so T is our variable. Okay, same idea as before. We're gonna to have to isolate this exponential portion in order to replace it with its log version it's inverse fun it's inverse version so let's divide both sides by 50,000 1 million divided by 50,000 is 20 and I'm going to go ahead and do this math I'll just go out to four decimal I think it actually goes out to four decimal places um, precisely but I can do this it's just a math problem I can put it in a calculator and the answer, 1 plus 0 0.09 divided by 12 is 1.0075. And we're going to raise that to the 12t. Okay, now I have an isolated exponential portion. Let's rewrite it in its log form. This is the base. So the log, and that has a, a, a pretty crazy base, but it's okay. The calculator can handle it. Base of 1.0075. This is the argument, and a log outputs the exponent right there. So again, I like to check it when I go from exponential to log, I like to make my little loop. Am I correct? Base to exponent equals argument, and that's the exact same as this. So I've gone from here to here correctly. That's back checking. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 12. And my time is going to be the log to this large base or this long base, 1.0075, the log base 1.0075 of 20 divided by 12. That goes into a calculator. How long is it going to take for $50,000 to grow to a million at 9% compounded monthly? Well, it takes approximately 33.4 years. The younger, the better. The younger, the better, of course. All right, let's do one more example. Let's talk about blood alcohol content. Again, a similar idea that we've been following, just more words around it, a little different application. Um, an application this time that involves how much alcohol is in your blood. So medical research indicates that the risk of having a car accident increases exponentially as the concentration of alcohol in the blood increases. This risk can be modeled by this exponential function. R, the risk, uh, the risk as a percent, is equal to 6 times the number E raised to 12.77 times X, where X is the blood alcohol concentration. What blood alcohol concentration corresponds to a 17% risk of a car accident? So how much, you know, what, what BAC will, will give you about a, well, will give you a 17% risk of an accident. Well, let's put 17 for R because that's what R stands for. 6 times E to the 12.77X. Okay, same idea. We want to get at this exponential part before we can rewrite it as a log. So let's divide both sides by 6. And if you're going to divide this and round it early before you're done, I always say go out at least four decimal places. And it's 2.83 repeating. I'll put in three threes here, and that equals E to the 12.77X. Okay, I have the exponential portion isolated. Now let's rewrite it as a log. Okay, that's the base. 
So I'm gonna write this with the word log and put the base E there. This is the argument. And of course, a log equals an exponent and the exponent is 12.77 times X. Okay, let's just check it. E raised to the 12.77X is equal to 2.8333, and that's what I have up here. Now I'm gonna note, of course, that the log base E is the same as simply writing the natural log, which I'll do down below. But I know that this is the natural log, but I can also find the same answer using this, this method here. If you wanna write the natural log here instead, that's totally fine. I just like to see my E, so when I back check to make sure I went from here to here correctly, I can draw my loop that helps me uh, keep things correct. Okay, so we divide both sides by 12.77 to solve for X. And X is equal, and now I'll write it with that natural log. Log base E is the natural log of 2.8333, all divided by 12.77, and this turns out to be a blood alcohol content level of approximately uh, 0 0.082. That's the blood alcohol content level that comes from this one. So you've seen the same pattern taking place. Isolate the log term, the log portion, or the exponential portion, and then you want to rewrite it using the inverse, uh, and then solve from there as necessary. It all goes just fine.